This tutorial is for those who want to understand Surveyor a little bit more and how to manipulate the terrain. So first off, go to Driver Surveyor in Trains Railroad Simulator 2019 and under here there will be a Create Route button. Click that and it will start to open up a blank baseboard. Name your route, for now I'll use example. Under the Topology tab, which you can get there by clicking on the tab, or you can hit F1, also opens it up. You'll find there is a Height Up, a Height Down, and an Adjust Height button. These will be uh, some easy tools to use to manipulate your train. So select the Height Up tool, and under, under there you'll find there's a Radius for your uh, where your mouse is. For, to select what parts of the terrain you'll be editing and then there's a sensitivity radi uh, sensitivity level as well which is how much uh, you will affect the terrain each time you click and, and drag so we'll start off with a lower sensitivity and a higher radius and we've got the height up tool selected and you'll see we can click or drag and hold drag and that manipulates the terrain and brings it up as well so what we're manipulating the train now at is a resolution of 10 meters. So these yellow lines here are your 10 meter squares. And in between these, you've got a darker line which will indicate your five meter squares. So if you don't want to manipulate the train at a 10, uh, a 10 meter resolution, you can select this to be five meters, click on add update ground X and click on the existing baseboard and it will ask do you want to continue now it can break some things if you've already done a fair bit of work uh, most of the time it won't but I'll say to update that now you've seen nothing looks different at the moment but if we change our, our radius when we're adjusting the height you'll see that we now start to get a bit more finer control and these vertices around the uh, black lines will start to be uh, updated as well. So that's that's going to change uh, our terrain so we get a better resolution. Okay, so that's the height up tool and the resolution in which you want to uh, edit the terrain. So I've now got it at a, a nicer resolution to you can see now that's that was manipulated at 10 this is manipulated at 5 meters you can see there's a better resolution to our mounds uh, you obviously don't want to use 5 meter resolution all over your route if you've got a hills in the distance uh, as you start to move back you're not really going to notice uh, much of the resolution difference when you're when you're further away so you only really want to use the 5 meter grids when you're up close to the track and you want to manipulate the terrain in a way that you'll definitely see the difference. Uh, sensitivity is how fast the terrain will will be manipulated based on how strong the sensitivity is. So if I turn that right down, you know, I can hold my mouse down and it goes really, really slow. Same with uh, height down, you know, that brings your terrain down and adjust height allows you to hold your mouse button down and adjust up and down uh, to get, I guess, a bit more finer control. So those three uh, are the pretty basic options you'll use to manipulate your train. Uh, the next ones you can use is the Get Height tool. So you right click and drag over something that, uh, some piece of height that you want. Uh, obviously select the Get Height tool. And you'll see as you're dragging around that uh, height which is in meters, will change based on where your cursor is. So let's say we want everything to be about that height. We can then do one of two things. Uh, we can get the use height button. We can use height and it will use the height at where the cursor is and start to flatten everything out as you hold and click around. Now, sensitivity is used again here. You can quickly change it or you can slowly change it over time. Um, but that's the get height and that's to make some nice um, flat areas you might need to do that in your route and then there's the plateau tool which uh, 
will be used to, oh, I'll get some more sensitivity, to kind of make uh, the ground that's lower get a, a bit of a degree or a, 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 I'm trying to think of the word, sorry, like a slope from the, the top of the uh, highest point to the lowest point. So it will create that sort of gradient around. So that's a plateau tool. It's very handy to to create effects like um, like the sides of uh, sloping mounds. And then moving on, we can use the uh, add water tool. Now let me just bring some terrain down a little bit. Uh, and I'll get the height on that. And I'll just flatten it out a little bit. All right. So add water to add water. You click the add water button. Start painting it down as you would any other thing. And you'll see here that our water goes above there. So you've got two options there. You can either paint, uh, raise the terrain around, or you can grab this tool here, adjust water height and you just click on it and drag down until you've got the water at the level you want it to be. And that's how you go about adding your water, which is also found in the topology tab. Uh, deleting water, remove water, that'll get rid of your plane within the radius of your, of your tool there. Uh, we'll undo that. Important undo and redo up the top here. They're pretty important, you'll use them a lot. Uh, also control Z for undo and control Y for redo, shortcut keys, which are pretty handy. Uh, under the advanced options, you'll find there's the ground uh, layer or, yeah, I guess the ground layer that you can edit. Uh, and then there's the effects layers that you can add, which are a bit more complex. Uh, there's plenty of tutorials online about how to add to effects and clutter. So jump online in the wiki or and have a look to see how they work. We'll concentrate on the ground layer today. Uh, other options you've got to manipulate the terrain. We'll go and add another baseboard at five meters over here. So adding more baseboards, you just click the add update ground and click in the space where you want the baseboard to be added. And another one gets added. If you zoom out, you can see that that's your new baseboard there. So that gives you a bit of an overview. Zooming back in, uh, you also, something to note, there are 720 meters by 720 meters, uh, just in case you're wanting to do a certain size route. And within this new baseboard, we're gonna use a uh, ground uh, height, or a displacement map, basically. And we'll just select the first one here that's been made. This is these are the presets. Uh, we'll select this one, and we will select the area we want that to happen to. We might even try and select the whole square. Might be a bit more than the, the whole square, but we'll go with that. And let's try and actually select the whole thing. Sorry. And here we've got fill. Cancel selection or get displacement, and we'll show you that one in a second. So when the f when we we're going to use the fill area, this is how much uh, how intense it will be. So for example, we'll start off really low, and we will press the fill button, and that's what we get with that displacement map. You know, so it's, it's very rocky looking, which is probably not what we want. So we'd have to smooth that out or use a better displacement map or uh, use it across a bigger area, which would give us a lot smoother um, terrain as well. So, or if you, you know, if you can increase it fully, you're going to get some pretty crazy effects going on. So that's, that's the displacement scale. So let's drop it back down to about there. And if you don't want to use one of the presets that we've got here, it's a hill. Uh, you can create your own. Scale it back down to there. 
So we might uh, decide that, yeah, that all looks pretty good, but we perhaps want to, uh, oh, let's turn this one off. Uh, oh, do, do, do. Let me think about this. Ah, get rid of that one. Yeah, that resets it, right? Okay. Oh, so that's something to note as well. Sorry, while we're there, we'll jump back into uh, the hill, which is an easy one to understand and look at. And it would seem that we can paint little hills everywhere using the displacement map. So that's quite handy as well. So if we jump, get that one, it starts to manipulate the terrain based on the displacement map. Up or down. Uh, I think you'll find it might invert it. So there's that one. Yeah, so it inverts it. So that's handy to use. And if you want to make your own displacement maps, uh, we'll cancel that one. And you can come in here and let's just raise something rather big so we can see it actually take effect. And once we get up to what we want, you say, yeah, that's the displacement map we want. And we can go ahead and select the area that we want to make a displacement map from and go get displacement. And then that becomes my new uh, displacement map. And as you can see, if I go over here and use it over here, that mimics what I had over there. Obviously I'm not using it in the same shape, so we're getting something different. Uh, but that's, that's pretty much it. And you can save that out as my displacement map. And you'll find that that'll be an asset that you can reuse over and over again and will be in your list. So that's uh, the topology tab covered, I think. If there's any more questions on that, please go to the wiki, uh, sorry, the forums, and then we'll add some information on the wiki uh, to help you out further. Thanks for watching.